You must have seen on several occasions while you're on the road, a passerby suddenly collapses and starts jerking his limbs, his hands and legs violently. Passes by come over, hand him over or make him grip metal objects or keys or sometimes make him snip the footwear. Well, guys, this is the commonest way in which a seizure manifests. Dr. Naeem Sadiq, neurologist, neuropsychiatrist, and specialist in regenerative medicine, founder and medical director of Plexus Neuro Center, coming to you with yet another educational session on epilepsy or seizure disorder. What is a seizure and what is epilepsy? Let me try to simplify a very complicated activity which happens in the brain. Every movement, everything which happens in our body is controlled by electrical activity. If the electrical activity is smooth, then our functioning is coordinated and it is purposeful. At times, because of several reasons, there is a surge in electrical activity which disrupts the normal movement and a person goes into violent jerky movements which is a commonest type of seizures and several other disturbances in the level of sensorium or consciousness. That is the basic mechanism why a seizure happens. Now what are the different causes of seizures? A seizure can be caused because of an underlying pathology in the brain. For example, a tumor, an infection in the brain, an electrolyte imbalance causing a chemical imbalance in the brain. Because of a stroke after a cerebrovascular accident or paralysis, these are the, some of the commonest causes which are found in the adult population. In children, it can be because of birth asphyxia or anoxic brain damage. It can be because of a genetic abnormality in the brain or it can be because of any metabolic disorder with which the child is born. It can be because of several genetic disorders. And yes, seizures can be found in families. It can also be a familial disorder. Okay, now coming to the different types of seizures. Now, in the initial part of the discussion, I was talking about the violent jerky movements of the limbs. Is this the only type of seizure? No, it can present in several ways. For example, in children, what we know as what we call as the absence or the petit mal seizures, where the child's sensorium is absent for three seconds, where and then continues. Now, I don't know if you noticed there was a pause of three seconds while I was talking. OK, so this pause in the talking, that is an absence seizure or petit mal seizure. Now, it can also present as an abnormal behavior which lasts for a few seconds or a few minutes. A person suddenly behaves abnormally, starts chewing, starts lip smacking, searching, fumbling with the buttons, fiddling with things around, could be anything. And after some time, the person is unaware of what he did. A person while going, wanting to go in one direction might suddenly go to some other place and realize he has come there without his knowledge. People could behave in erratic manner, have violent episodes, do acts, certain acts of which they are not aware of. All these are manifestations of seizures. Yes, of course, the commonest and the most popularly known type of seizure is the 
seizure where the, all the four limbs start jerking violently, which is scary to look, and that is known as a generalized tonic clonic seizure. Now, what are seizures and what is epilepsy? Now, seizure is a disorder which I have been talking to you about. These are episodes. Now, if these seizures occur recurrently, if they occur repeatedly, the syndrome is known as epilepsy. Some of the causes of seizures or epilepsy I mentioned uh, in the initial part of my discussion. But by and large, the commonest cause of epilepsy is unknown, which is, known, which is classified under idiopathic seizures. If the person does not have any other treatable causes, then he falls under the group of idiopathic epilepsy. How do we diagnose this case? Seizures or epilepsy is something where the most important diagnostic tool here is the eyewitness report. Because the patient is unaware of what happens, so we sit with the patient and the bystander during the attack, during the attack and then listen to his story very, very carefully. Now, based on his account, you have a strong suspicion that this person might have, might have presented with a seizure. And then we have other things to confirm the diagnosis, namely an EEG. EEG is similar to the ECG, which is done to record the electrical activity of the heart. EEG is a test which is done to record the electrical activity of the brain. Along with this, we might do a lot of blood tests to rule out certain metabolic problems. And then, of course, an imaging technique and the most commonly done is in uh, MRI scan to see if there is any structural abnormality in the brain. It could be a granuloma, it could be an infection, it could be a tumor, it could be a clot, it could be several other things. Now, once the diagnosis is established, then starts the treatment procedure. Now, there are several people who keep asking, you know, can this be prevented? How will we know the seizure is coming? How can we manage it? Now, briefly, I'll go into some of the uh, common uh, things which are associated with the treatment aspect. By and large, the most successful form of treatment and what I have been doing over the last 30 years and what most of the neurologists all over, all over the world do is choose the right drug for the right type of seizure in the right dose. Once this is done, I would say between 70 to 90 percent of seizures come under control without any problem. So the right drug in the right dose for the right type of seizure. Now there could be patients who do not respond to one drug. In that case, we might have to add another drug or a third drug. Despite the patient taking the full dose in the proper manner, the way the doctor or the physician has advised him, the seizures do not come under control. It's at that point of time we think of other forms of treatment when we have classified this type of uh, epilepsy as refractory epilepsy. So what are the other modes? The next mode is the surgical mode where the patient might have to undergo a brain surgery, removal of the tumor, for instance, or he might even undergo, like we, we have certain techniques such as VNS, vas vas uh, vagal nerve stimulation, and several other forms of surgery depending on the pa underlying pathology which the patient has. But even this may not be 100% curative. So well, in that case, we use what we have been doing at Plexus, stem cell therapy. In the last 30 plus years of my practice and having seen thousands, maybe a lakh or more of patients suffering from epilepsy, uh, there are some questions which people have been asking me frequently and they most probably these questions might be arising in your minds as well. So I thought uh, it would be appropriate at this moment to uh, answer these questions. Now, the first question is when, when you see somebody having an attack, your relative, your neighbor or a you know, person on the road or whatever, what do you do? Should we 
give him the keys or some metal object? Should we make him stiff a chapel or a sock or whatever? What should be done? Well, nothing. Okay, you will not give any keys, you will not give any shoes or slippers. What you will do if the person is wearing a tie, loosen the tie. If a person is wearing the buttons on top, loosen, make his neck region loose so that he starts breathing. Turn the person on his side so that his tongue doesn't fall back, which might prevent his breathing. And then wait for a few seconds because generally the seizure will not last for more than a minute or two. Take care that he does not get hurt and does not choke and his airway is taken care of. That's the most important thing and immediately after that the patient uh, can be shifted to a hospital or a clinic uh, to be seen by a doctor and uh, taken care of. The next question is can epilepsy be prevented? Well, uh, epilepsy is a disease like any other disease and uh, yes, it, you can take care of it. The occurrence of seizures might be less if the intake of food is regular, if the sleep is adequate and if there is no there are no stress factors. Um, that, that's the only thing which uh, you can do. If a, if a person is already suffering from seizures or epilepsy and he wants to prevent, then he has to listen to the doctor's advice, you know, take the medication regularly and whatever the doctor has advised, he needs to follow these. When should I get tested for epilepsy? Well, if there is any episode like like uh, abnormal behavior lasting for a few seconds or minutes, loss of consciousness lasting for a few seconds or minutes, or laughing episodes, violent episodes, or any kind of jerky movements, where uh, episodes wherein the patient feels giddy and then collapses, any of these episodes which last for a few seconds to minutes which are not accounted for by any other reason. Then the, you have to visit a physician or a neuro roll in or rule out uh, epilepsy. How is epilepsy treated at plexus? You know, this is this is one of the uh, commonest question I've been coming across of late. Uh, well, at plexus, what we do is a very simple thing. First of all, establish the diagnosis. Is it epilepsy or not? If it is epilepsy, what type of epilepsy is it? Then find out the cause. Is it a cause which can be eliminated by whatever? You know, if, if, the, if the patient is getting seizures because of low sugar or if the patient is getting seizures because of some other infection. So treat those underlying causes and then choose the right medication and treat him. Is it costly? No, not at all. You know, the cost of treatment of seizures is, is in a few thousands, you know, very, very uh, reasonable, like treating any other disease, like treating diabetes or hypertension or um, not even heart disease, maybe diabetes or hypertension. It's affordable and not at all expensive. Yes, if the patient is not responding to the conventional mode of treatment, then we have to go into advanced form of treatments like surgery, BNS or stem cell therapy. That is a little on the expensive side. We have several questions coming in from the audience. Uh, let me take some of the relevant ones here. The first question is uh, from Ms. Aparajita Mishra. Uh, Aparajita writes here, my son has been taking medicine since seven months old. Now he's 16 plus, still seizure is not controlled. Doctor increased the dose of medicines. Now advice for VNS, please advise how far it is effective. Miss Aparajita, good evening. Hope you're doing well. Sorry to hear that your child is suffering from seizures for the last 16 years or so, and they're still not controlled. And uh, your doctor has advised for VNS. Well, VNS is effective. There are quite a few patients who have responded to VNS, but I would still advise uh, you to try out uh, several other non-surgical methods before you would uh, embark on to any surgical technique. We have Ms. Sarika Kapil Sharma. She writes, my daughter has LGS, rare kind of epilepsy, non-curable with daily multiple types of seizures. Treatment going on last 18 years, but still seizures. It can be stopped or not. Hi, Sarika. 
the good news is that uh, I've had several cases of uh, LGS or Lennox, Lennox Gestalt syndrome whom I've treated using stem cell therapy. Well, uh, stem cell therapy would be a nice option for you to consider uh, with the fact that for the last 18 years, the treatment is still going on and seizures are not controlled. So uh, please forward your details uh, and I'll get back to you. Mr. Shailish Mishra asks a question. Having medicine for last 27 years and now on reduction, no clear episode or seizure in past seven years. Does it relapse? How much chances of transfer of disease through hereditary? Hi Shailish. Good, good to hear that there have been no seizures for the last seven years. Excellent. You know, that's, that's a very, very uh, good news for you. Does it relapse? Um, we, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, have faith. Uh, follow the advice which your doctor has given you. Sleep regularly. Eat well. Don't take unwanted stress and uh, hope for the best. Uh, we, we, we can never predict. Uh, you know, um, it may relapse. It may never relapse. How much chances of transfer of disease through hereditary? Well, uh, like uh, I have already mentioned it to you, uh, seizures are found to be familial. Uh, there are a lot of uh, genetic studies which have been done, but it's not absolute. It's not absolute. I don't want you to live with the fear that your children will have seizure. No, there are so many people whose parents, grandparents, great parents, none of them have had seizures and they had a fit. And there are people where the father and mother both had seizures and the children have, have never had uh, effect. So hope for the best and be positive. Pintu Mishra asks home treatment. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Pintu Mishra. Uh, I, I have no clues about the home treatment. Uh, I don't know if you're asking if there is any home remedy. Well, there is no home remedy. There's only first tape which you can give and rush him to a hospital as soon as possible. We have a question from a doctor here. Uh, Dr. Najib, my child have seizure attack last year, 6th March 2019. After that, we consult a pediatrician. He suggested us for first EEG. On that report, he said it has little bit attack by seizure. He gave my child a medicine sodium valproate, of course, for two years. After that, he is free of seizure till date. Please give some suggestions. It is correct as per your experience. Kindly reply. Uh, yes, it is correct. It is one of the one of the uh, first line drugs which your doctor has given. It's a wonderful drug and I have used it and a lot of doctors, neurologists, epileptologists all over the world have been using it. And uh, the result is evident. Uh, the child has not had a seizure. So the, whatever medicine the doctor has given and here sodium valproate syrup is the right drug. It has given you result. Just go back to your doctor and listen to his advice. He has given you the right treatment. Well, guys, these were the questions which uh, had, there were a lot of questions, but we selected uh, the ones which were uh, more relevant. Uh, if you have any more questions to ask, you can always uh, uh, post them. You can uh, ask them on my website uh, or you can uh, call me, send a mail, get in touch with me in any, any of the means uh, which uh, are listed. Uh, it was good talking on this uh, very, very common uh, topic. Uh, the, 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 we don't have the exact incidence rate here, but, but we have lots and lots and lots of people with seizures and epilepsy. But what is more alarming is that there are lots of people who are not on right treatment. They're not going to the right uh, uh, specialist. They're not going to the doctors. There are a lot of people who still believe in uh, uh, the dargahs and temples. And well, yes, we need the blessings of God. We need, we need. Without that, we can't do anything. But then after we take the right guidance, after we take the right medication, and after we follow the right advice from the doctors. So keep following us on our social media for updates. I'll be coming back to you another interesting topic related to the brain and mind. Thank you.